This Takeda gameplay trailer probably has some of the most content we have ever gotten in a reveal trailer. Like right off rip, we got what I believe to be an MKX Easter egg. I mean, come on now, it's it's just gotta be. And also, I don't want to say I told you so, but I got this comment on the short I posted when we got the first reveal. The commenter was actually right. If we take a listen to MKX's announcer voice right now, this is what it sounds like. Takeda. The announcer says something more along the lines of Takeda. But then if we go to the end of this gameplay trailer, he says... Takeda wins. Definitely Takeda, which I think is the proper pronunciation. And I just thought it was funny. This has happened with multiple characters in the series and happens across multiple different announcer voices in the series. But I would like to start with the three cameo buffs that we saw in this trailer. Sector is fairly obvious. The homing missile starts up much quicker. The time it takes from the missile to come out of Sector and then hit the opponent is much more rapid. It also shoots two homing missiles instead of one, which is really good because it denies armor and a lot of circumstances. Like there's multiple different situations where this would destroy armor. The first homing rocket and your move if you're applying pressure might hit and he might armor through it, but that second homing rocket or the third hit in the interaction will probably punish him for doing something like that. It also should make combos like this with Scorpion Sector a little more reliable. Notice how that comboed, so you could do it at the end. You know, I'm just doing something random right here. But it's a lot of damage. That was 40% and it wasn't even optimal. The issue it's always had though is you can't really do it on reaction. You kind of have to just do it in the middle of combos because you essentially have to call Sector out right as you're inputting the move, so you have no way of knowing if that move will hit or not. It does keep you safe in a lot of instances, but you can't use it as like a hit confirm. The next change we saw is that Cyrax is going to drop the destructing bomb no matter what. Even if he gets hit, he's going to throw that bomb on the ground. This one is interesting. It looks the least useful. While yes, it is going to be nice to just get the bomb down no matter what, it just seems like it could promote goofy gameplay Play because as you know, this bomb right here will actually self-destruct me too if I'm near it. So having something that can hurt either opponent just kind of rolling around on the ground for, you know, no setup or anything. My hot take theory though on this move is that if the opponent hits you when you're setting up the Cyrax self-destruct, that bomb actually becomes a low. And I think that's fair because you as the player using Cyrax can't control if that happens. I just think it either needs to be a low hit or if it's on the ground, and not the one where Cyrax is holding it, it actually doesn't damage the person who used it. Frost is really interesting because that wall right there is an ambush ability, meaning at any point in the combo, you can just call out that wall. It creates a corner for you anywhere on screen and it does synergize really well with Frost Kit. Because it's an ambush, we could say end the combo, I've already put up the wall and there's those setups, you know, where I put this on screen. And the big issue that has is people just back up and run away from you until it disappears. With the wall, this mind game becomes incredible because I can do stuff like this, right? So I get throw combos and my opponent cannot back up out of that. But at the same time, if the opponent just tries to duck that throw combo, I can use a mid and get a full combo. And so not even armor is really safe. If I come in with something like this, knock him down, that all breaks armor. So it's really a just mind game on the opponent, kind of a 50-50, and if the opponent chooses to spend armor, they're only going to beat it if you try the grab option. Otherwise, yeah, it's just really hard for the opponent getting essentially cornered anywhere on screen, so making that frost wall and ambush move was excellent from Netherrealm. I think we'll see a lot more of frost after this update because not only does her actual freeze and wall have an actual mind game to it now, she still gets the low for mix-ups and stuff like these two moves where this mid covers gaps because now you can make your launching strings mid-mid or just make any, you know, gap a mid. And this move, which is great against high armor attacks and sending the opponent back full screen. Now let's watch the Takeda trailer. The first time it's mostly going to be watching. I'm not going to pause it at all. And then afterwards we'll go through and break it down piece by piece. I always get flash banged by the beginning of these trailers because of the all white background. So sick. So sick. Your horns will look great on my wall. I think his voice actor is great to too. Dude, he just looks like a cooler scorpion. Bring back Hanzo. Come on. I get it. Kwai Liang fans, I'm sorry, but. Look at him! 
fight. There was a lot there. Whew. Jackie Briggs from MK11? Actually, that would be more air gas cabal. And a low. That's a throw combo waiting to happen. You see how Xiao popped up right there at the end? I don't want to be in some super team action movie. If that's a low, that is so disgusting. That's like Homelander's low. So he can set up on the frost wall too, which is why they're showing frost. That's sick. Oh my! Genji was right. You are scary. Our combat will frighten you further. That launcher is so sick. See, I can't tell if that hits low. Ooh. He's looking like an MKX character. He's got overheads too! You see what I mean? Dude, his combos are insane! What? It still goes on! Oh, and it's a full screen fatal blow. That's crazy. That's crazy. You also have to block so long when the fatal blow is happening because it's like how many hits? I know you don't get armor on all those hits, but so the way I see it, there is no way Takeda does a whole ton of damage. I saw overhead low mix-ups with extreme range. Like in his kit, he has a low combo starter and an overhead combo starter. And then on top of that, his buttons go really far. He has setups for days that are lows and he has strings that end in overheads. So let's go break it down one by one. Right off rip, when we start this trailer, look how far this move goes. I think this is a mid, especially because it interrupts and then ends with an overhead. That's crazy important because he's going to be one of the few characters with hard to blockables in his base kit. So he can kind of faux jump around. Notice he jumps back and then he grappling hooks himself back up to the top of the screen. But it's even more sick that after doing that, he can special cancel. So right there, oh my, his zoning even. He's just going to be a menace. You got to be scared anywhere on screen. Look at that. It's downward hitting covers a huge area when he lands that, so he fake jumps, then essentially punishes it with a downward aiming projectile. I'm gonna be honest on this one right here, if this is an overhead, right, it is over for people. I will never look back to Scorpion once. I'm already having my doubts, but Scorpion is getting a buff with the Takeda update to his enhanced teleport. It's just ridiculous. I feel like that's gotta be a mid for that kind of range, but if it's an overhead, that's... Phew. Yeah. As we see right here, he could chain together air attacks by using his upwards grappling hook, and he doesn't glow, so at least the first one is completely meterless when he does that. We'll see if he can do more of them in the same combo, and it might act like Omni-Man's, where after the first one being free, it costs meter for the rest of them. That's the non-amplified version, I think of the one that sets the three on the ground, and honestly, that's a really good move, even not amplified. We'll have to see what the recovery looks like, but he does seem like he moves pretty fast afterwards. Like it kind of just makes Scorpion's ground flames look useless because Scorpion takes so long to recover out of it. He gets punished for it unless you sped cameo. The grab is important because there's so many hits which means there's a lot of options in terms of cameos that can combo off that. But it also seems to favor cameo Scorpion and others like that like Janet Cage because you get all the damage before you have to throw out your cameo because he launches up at the very end. This is what I mean. That looks to be a low starter. If the overhead looking ones we saw earlier, you essentially are 50 50 in so many places on the screen, even if you've created space. But not only that, that teleport looks very suspiciously overhead. It might not be, but it also is dang near instant and he gets a full combo from it. Notice with this frost setup, he meterlessly puts that down. So the metered version is obviously going to be better when you don't have a wall at the opponent's back and stuff like that. And notice he throws a second one to activate everything. But having a meterless mind game with certain cameos is disgusting because again, he has overheads. That's how that move becomes workable, you know? So how are you going to guess there? You don't know what's coming at the end of that string. He could 
could have finished that string we just saw instead of the low in one of the overhead moves that he has at the end of the strings that we saw at the beginning of the trailer. So not only does that move have insane knockdown when you don't amplify it and it works like a scorpion spear, bruh, it might be better than scorpion spear. It full launches on amplify and this combo has been going on for forever for forever. We also get to see that that downward aiming one we saw at the beginning of the trailer where he's, you know, essentially using a projectile, but it's hitting the opponent. We saw it against Xiao. That one is comboable in the air when you amplify. Takeda, you must be scared everywhere on screen because, dude, I've seen overheads or mids that go insanely far. I've seen a low go insanely far. He's got teleport. He has like infinite combo extenders. He has mix-ups. He's got easy throw combos. I'm thinking the only way you balance this character is if you take away a lot of damage or his poke game is awful. So he's really good when he has neutral, like he'll be the best neutral playing character in the game. But as soon as a rushdown gets in his face, he might have the slowest pokes in the game. I, or the longest recovery on pokes in the game. I feel like that's the only way you balance him. I I don't know. He looks really strong just right off rip. Like I would call him top three if this kit is as good as it looks in a trailer. So that right there just continues into how his kit seems to be designed. It is super long. There are so many hits on it. It really feels like Baraka, except honestly, with all these moves I'm seeing, he has strings that are longer than Baraka's. I think this character will be hard to master, and I am a little concerned that a lot of these strings will be dial in. Think of Melina's mid, the forward one, four, four, or whatever it is. You have to dial in the whole string and then cancel in a very small window. You can't do, say, two of the buttons and then cancel to a special move. It's a dial in. At least that's what I'm guessing, because again, there are so many hits in all these combos. There we get to see the MKX smoke slide. Like 100%, I think that animation that he's sliding is like straight up ripped from Triborg smoke in MKX. And notice that, that's crazy. So he definitely has an overhead special move somewhere. It might even be the teleport because he went for two lows and then you would think the little size on the ground are lows as well. So the mind game there would be to go for an overhead. I don't know, but that is the amplified version of the setup stuff that was really popular in MKX and is coming back now. I'm, dude, he can launch off like 8,000 things and has overhead lows. Like, how are they balancing him? I, I really wish in these trailers we had the damage numbers or I just, I can't wait to see the frame data because it looks absurd. And I do like the homage to MKX Triborg. I feel like that final Ermac combo confirms to me that it was an overhead. Like, why would whoever play tested this to do the combo like try and set up the low thing on the ground and then go for the overhead. It looks like an attempted hard to blockable for me, which again, insane if that long range move is an overhead. Also notice, I think that launcher that we just saw where he goes in on an overhead before he teleports, right? So I definitely think the teleport is meterless, but the first one, I think he can change the hit properties on that. Notice that time he spent the bar again and it launched overhead. And the one we saw earlier in the trailer where he just launched the opponent into the air, it hit mid. Like that looks like a mid. So the overhead is probably extremely unsafe, but you get the option to choose just the straight up mid, which will be lightly unsafe, has a different launch property and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, again, I just keep looking at all these moves and I'm like, okay, yeah, the objective is to mix and also just play neutral the best in the game. I would say though, I think it is fairly balanced. It is really slow, as you could tell. Like he's doing it in a combo, so it does not matter. But do you see how long he like spins in the air? I think Netherrealm have definitely seen that giving him kind of an instant overhead right there would have been too cheap. So I bet if you up block that move, that special move in particular, you're getting to punish. It might even just be punishable if you block it correctly, but yeah, like it's definitely not going to be something you're going to see on block a whole ton because the startup is insane. And just, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that one, but it is just cool to see more mix up options. Like meterlessly, when he throws the little setup size on the ground, I'm sorry, I don't really know what they're called. It's been forever since I played MKX, but when he throws a meterlessly, when the opponent's airborne in a combo, it launches for free. 
So he just gets like infinite meterless launches because of teleport and that. He gets in infinite launches in general. It's really, really cool. I think they're demonstrating that he can use the overhead ender of that string and not spend any bar to special cancel. So you get the overhead, right? And he could probably cancel into the low things on the ground. So it's a 50-50. And the way you would convert off that is using a cameo like Sector to make that meterless 50-50 right there at the end. And then even if the opponent guesses right, the Sector missiles are going to be keeping you safe. That's kind of disgusting. This right here, this is a really like, it doesn't look like much, but impressive that, yeah, like this is giving you a reason to use Sector. And I'm sure there's other cameos that do the same thing. So he also gets that overhead that we just talked about with the very long spin time in the air as well. So he launches from that. And he goes to the ground, but then immediately can teleport out of it and relaunch on the other side. So, yeah, and it doesn't look like these teleports are costing any bar for him. So, he's just a combo machine! And, oh my god, dude, he's so much better than Scorpion. Unless the teleport cancel buff or the amplified teleport buff is substantial, there is no way I'm not picking Takeda as my new main. He's just insane to watch. He looks really fun. And he looks really strong right now. Like, I just want to play out this whole combo over again and just say, like, look how long this one is. And this isn't even the only long one in the trailer. He can launch so much. And the fact that he still, like, has resources and can still use Fatal Blow at the end of that combo it is just wild. It's, it's so wild. This character looks so fun. I haven't been this hype for a single DLC, I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe Omni-Man, but this... This one has me really excited to just grind MK1 again. Dude, everything's good. I didn't even say this earlier, talking about all his benefits, but that fatal blow is going to be a casual destroyer. So many people are going to get hit by that, and it looks like it'll have insane pushback. So punishing will be hard. I think characters like Scorpion will be okay, because Scorpion could just throw Spear right after. But I do think, again, his strength is when he's in neutral, he's really hard to beat. And I think right there, he puts you in far neutral again, where you just really need to know what you're doing. Because if your character struggles right there, it's not going to be fun for you at all. I think that's got to be the end for this breakdown, because I'm going to get a little bit too speculative. And I'm getting super speculative because I think I'm looking at my new main. Scorpion, underwhelming in MK1. We all know it. This looks like a fun way to play. It's how Scorpion should have been designed off rip. Full stop. Scorpion was a blunder. You can't make one of the poster childs of the series just look not cool in comparison to something like Takeda. Why would you play Scorpion? He just looks better in so many different areas. So that's it. Get subscribed because I'm going to be playing Takeda day one. I might even throw up a live stream like after my video goes out on the day Takeda releases and just play a bunch of you for viewer sets.